three-year-old Ezra doesn't have a care in the world as long as his trains run on time. Life for his mum, Carly, is more complicated. She's a single parent working 28 hours a week as a senior manager at a charity. She says she's relatively well paid, but rent and the £800 a month she pays in childcare to work wipes out the bulk of her salary, forcing her to rely on universal credit. The extra £20 a week has been invaluable, she says. For it to now be taken away, um, especially at a time where everything's increasing, so my rent's gone up, my nursery fees have gone up, energy bills are going up. Most of us will be living like payday to payday or universal credit payment to universal credit payment. So where does that £80 come? Carly is one of six million people who lose out by more than £1,000 a year. Taking on two hours extra work a week, recommended by the government, would be cancelled out by the cost of childcare, she says. Carly's not sure what more she can do. I'm trying to work but work slightly reduced hours so that I can make that balance. My son is in childcare. I'm also using grandparents where I can. I'm very much trying to, to make that balance. I kind of feel like we're put in this impossible situation where you're, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't, really. And the, the whole system is set up against you rather than to work with you. Getting people into work, getting them more work, higher paid work, in the face of widespread opposition to ending the extra £20 a week, much of it from senior Conservatives, the government's message has been resolute. The focus can no longer be on benefits, it must be on jobs. But around 40% of people on Universal Credit are already working, and they say the extra money simply allowed them to keep their heads above water. Their question now, what happens as the uplift disappears and a cost of living crisis looms? It's not only the families who are worried. At the Conservative Party conference, the very architect of Universal Credit was making a last-ditch attempt to get his government to change course. And I'm just simply saying, even if you intend to do this, at least let's see through these few months through the winter until we know where we are exactly. That's all I'm asking, you know, and it's just a... My concern isn't about the Conservative Party, my concern is about those who will find themselves on low incomes and they just need to know that we're okay before they start making precipitative change. Taking selfies but no questions about universal credit. The Chancellor out on walkabout at the Conservative Party conference. He's already announced £500 million in grants for people on low incomes but had this message for struggling families during his speech yesterday. Now you tell me, is the answer to their hopes and dreams just to increase their benefits? Is the answer to tell that young family the economic system is rigged against you and the only way you stand a chance is to lean ever more on the state? So firstly, it's really offensive that he suggests our hopes and dreams would be based on benefits or an additional 80 pounds a month. Um, my hopes and dreams involve not being on universal credit. Sit up and let me put your wellies on, please. For now, the reality is she can't survive yeah. without it. The Prime Minister spoke today of a brighter future, of companies stepping in to pay better wages. But for Carly, yes, as the cost of living rises and her universal credit is cut, she says the looming winter could be a long one.